Good morning. Alec would like to share some thoughts from the family about his grandmother, Sharon. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Really happy to see everybody here. Um, if there's one thing Grandma Sharon loved, it was for everybody to get together, uh, especially in her honor. So, uh, you know, glad to see everybody. But, uh, you know, her siblings and her sister wanted to share a few words about her before everything started. So, I'm going to do that. <clears throat> her daughter, Suzanne, would like you to know, my mom was a force of nature. We could all feel it. Her love for us was compassionate and always unifying. Her family was her whole heart. Love, Sue, Steph, Jaden, and Lucas. Her son, Mike, would like you to know. My mom was a caring, fun-loving person who I loved going to a concert, the beach, or a movie with. She was always out to live her life fully, no matter what life threw at her. I'll miss her a lot. Love, Mike, Olivia, Jordan, Elena, and Sean. Her daughter, Lisa, would like you to know. My mom was my best friend the person I called first thing in the morning for anything and everything. She was my strength, the best part of me, and the best travel buddy. She was grace, love, and my Jesus here on earth. Love you, Mama. Love Lisa, Tom, Alec, Ben, Alice, Derby, Beckett, and Finn. Her son, Tony, would like you to know. My mom was my best friend, my rock, my one. She gave me life, showed me life, and was my life. She taught me to fearlessly love the Lord, my children, my grandson, the beach, lobster, live music, and to live my best life. Thank you, Mom, for always being my superhero. Until we see you on beautiful beaches in heaven one day, love you long time. Love your baby boy, Josh, Kaylee, and Jackson. Her sister Charlotte would like you to know she loves her sisters the moon and back, and I hope you're dancing in the sky. See you again, but not too soon. Yep. Welcome to St. Francis de Sales Church. Please note that a restroom is located at the side door to your right. We would like to especially welcome those who are from other faith traditions, and we invite you to participate in our standing, kneeling, and sitting postures of prayer. We would also invite you to simply remain seated throughout the service if that's what's most comfortable for you. We're glad you're celebrating with us today, and we want you to feel at home in our place of worship. Our mass prayer responses can be found on the white cards at the end of the pews. As we prepare for our celebration, please silence all cell phones and please stand. Please face the back of the assembly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Sharon died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory.
please sing How Great Thou Art, number 772 in the hymnals, 772. Let us pray. God of our ancestors in faith, by the covenant made on Mount Sinai, you taught your people to strengthen the bonds of family through faith, honor, and love. Look kindly upon Sharon, a mother who sought to bind her children to you. Bring her to the, our heavenly home, where the sins dwell in blessedness and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and let Tony come and help us with the first reading. Good morning. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard a voice from heaven say, write this. Blessed are the dead who die in the name of the Lord from now on. Yes, said the Spirit. Let them find rest from their labors, for their works accompany them. The word of the Lord. Shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. My 
Reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not so to what is seen but is what but what uh, but to what is in the unseen for wit for what is seen is transitory but what is unseen is eternal for we know that if our earthly dwelling a tent should be destroyed we have a building from god a dwelling not made with hands eternal in heaven the word of the Lord. No. 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, They ask come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, they also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever saves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Please be seated. Julissa, Tom, Michael, Stephanie, Suzanne, Tali, Tony, and to the grandchildren, Alec, Olivia, Ellis, Elena, Ben, Josh, Jaden, Kaylee, and Lucas, to the stepchildren, Jason and Jonathan, to Charlotte, and to Beckett, Ben, and Jackson, and to all the others, family members. I stand before you today, not as one who has all the answers to your pain. I stand as one in front of you, not to fix you, but to share in your deep pain, sadness, but what? Faith and hope. When a person dies, we hear all kinds of good things said about them. But you know the most amazing things people say about them? She was a good woman. In the world of super superlative, we want to use all the big, extra, and old, great, very, very. When God created the world, he said it was good because he gave it a purpose. Our world is not about how wonderful and great but purpose and meaning. The woman laying here before us has that. That's why she was able to transcend difficult childhood, the struggles of life, and sickness. And in the world we live in, we are faced with these contradictory things. The most wonderful joy, maybe you go to a party, have a music, a little bit of drink, we feel good, love, new life. And yet we are faced also with what? Disease that frustrates us. Storm. All these other things that make pain very real in the world. And we ask the question, how can a loving and all-knowing and perfect God allow this to exist? And the answer is what? In the resurrection of Jesus. That's why Paul tells us that it is in the resurrection of Jesus all things belong to you. When we understand this, then death is not a final end. It's a cry of victory. Then death is not blowing out the candle because the end has come. It's blowing out the candle because the dawn has arrived. That is what is for her. This is what this Paschal candle reminds us as Christians. That in the world that we live in, 
We have a purpose, we have a mission, and when we accomplish it, we reflect Christ. We, re we accomplish the mission of the one who sent us. That's why it doesn't matter whether we live short, long. The fulfillment of our life is that we are good. And so what does that mean for Sharon? For a young girl who grew up being shy in high school and middle school, who seemed to be had been that quiet, quiet person, who then all of a sudden blows them, who said, I'm never going to allow the circumstances of my life to define me, but I'm going to allow what? My faith and every gift God has given me, but I add my love. As I was going through the website, our obituary, I like to go down through the comment, and everyone who writes to you is this. She touched my life so profoundly in a way I don't know if she knew. Oh, Grandma Sharon, as my daughters used to say, but they're not related to you. Because in the world we live in, people tell us that blood is thicker than water than anything, blood. And I say to the per person, could you tell me when two people fall in love and get married, is that blood a love? It reminds us of that, the most perfect love. But how do we get that in the waters of baptism? So that's why when you come to the Catholic Church, You'll see, we'll stand, we will kneel, we have all these things. You're not in planet fitness. It is the way we express our love, our faith, and what we believe in. At the beginning of this Mass, Sharon was taken back to the door of the church. And when, she, when that time came, I walked right to the door of the church. Because when Sharon was a baby, when you bring a baby to be baptized, if we follow that ancient tradition, it is at the door of the church that we receive them. And at the door of the church, we mark them with the sign of cro the cross, which is the sign of God, on their forehead, as opposed to the other sign, 666. Six, six. By once we mark you, and you are marked with that seal, you set apart, and you're different. And then you will be walked up, as we all did, brought her up. And then through the waters of baptism, that is thicker than water, she will be changed. She no longer, be, that person, we no longer just us. We are now what? Sons and daughters of Christ, God, just like Christ. And after that is done, we are told that our dignity, our meaning, is not shaped by what our zip code is, what our money is, what our mistakes is, what our sin is, which the world tries to tell us all the time. But it's shaped by what? The very fact of whom we belong to. Sons and daughters of God. If you notice, we are, me and her were wearing the same white cloth, the same that signifies the love and dignity of Christ. To, tomorrow, we will bury a priest. Watch, it's still going to be what? The same white cloth, which signifies whom? Christ. That that's who we are, sons and daughters of Christ. We are told that in the world you're going in, there will be darkness, but Christ is not going to abandon you. But we use a candle to tell us that. Because the light of Christ and the love of God requires what? Sacrifice. See, this candle is not going to enjoy its light. Just like, have you ever seen an ocean that drinks its water? Or a fruit that enjoys, or a tree that enjoys its fruit? We sometimes enjoy the fruit of our love, but we give. This is who Sharon was. This is why she was a wonderful sister, because she loved. This is why she was a wonderful mother, 
because she did what gave you unconditional love. This is why she was a wonderful grandmother, because she did what created a safe place for you to come in that home where there was space, and you'll run around left, right, and center, and sometimes she will tell you, slow down, slow down, in a very sharing way. <laughs> and that's why, because of Sharon's love, if you turn around, you'll find that all those who sit here might not have known her directly, but they know you. That same single flame on Holy Saturday that light this, and true that the whole church did, Sharon did it by the flame of our life of love. That's why as we are here, Paul tells us this, we walk by faith, not by sight, because what is unseen is forever. Her life today and what we're celebrating, what we're saying is, this is not the end. Death has become a gift for Sharon because it becomes a door, not a wall. A door to enter into that new life. It doesn't make take away the reality that death is painful, that it seems final. But we believe in the resurrection of the dead, in the communion of the saints. It's why at this table we are going to celebrate exactly that the body of Christ. Not just Christ alone, because he is the head. We are the body by the waters of baptism. It is not only all of us gathered here, all those who've gone before us marked with the sign of faith. When Jesus went to see Martha and Mary, oh, I love those women because they had guts. If you were here, our brothers would not have died. And Jesus tell them, your brother will live again. Oh, I know, I know, I know. In the resurrection, in the last day, he said, no, 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 no. I am the resurrection and, the, and life. Do you believe that? Brought martyr to that belief. Sharon believed that so wonderfully. And luckily, she went to see the Pope, got the blessing, came back. And when the time came, and I showed up for the last ride, she didn't say, Father, go away. Why does God not love me? Why me? Why did this happen to me? I love my family. Did you hear her say that? No. As much as we tried to get her to stand up, mm. but when we started in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the woman whose eyes were closed, who was quiet, was awake. There, she find our strength. The question for you is, where will you find your strength? The question for me is, where will I find my strength? The question for you also is, how are we going to strengthen the world? Believe me, I don't know about you, sometimes it's difficult not to believe in me because I know my mistakes. I look in the mirror in the morning and I scream before I realize, oh, that is me. <laughs> but believing in God is not so much of believing in God. It's so we could believe in ourselves. We could know there is a mission and purpose for our life. So that the resurrection becomes what? Our hope. So the resurrection becomes life-changing. So we have a purpose and something to live for. I'll end with this story. Most of you have heard me tell this story. A priest from Africa came to the U.S. He was going to come and study here. He landed in Dallas. Another priest went to pick him. As they drive through it, they were talking, and then all of a sudden there was this quiet. And the priest said, oh my goodness, so what they said is so true. It's really terrible. And the other priest asked, what do you mean it's really terrible? It's a global warming. Look at the trees. It's all dead in America. The other priest smiled and said to him, you're going to be here longer. You're going to not be able to see not just one season, but all the seasons. And by the spring, 
I want you to say that again. Sometimes in our life, we experience just one season and we begin to conclude about life that way. But the other priest who, on, who saw the whole one was able to do what? Appreciate the process. And this is the process. Mom, sister, grandmother, but most importantly, daughter of God. She's gone home. Life is changed, not ended. May this hope be your consolation. May it allow you to give life your all and never sit on the fence or allow anything to define who you are but the very gift that God gave you as sons and daughters of God and sons and daughters and granddaughters of those who know Sharon. Sorry for your loss. Please stand. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, we intercede for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Sharon received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, we, the Lord, in your mercy, we pray, hear our prayer. Our sister Sharon was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, hear our prayer. Many members and friends of our family have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly the sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, hear our prayer. Those who trust in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone, especially Sharon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Sharon seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain, displace the darkness, and doubt that comes from grief. Lord, in your mercy we pray. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. We assemble here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Sharon. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy we pray. Hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of soul, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose life were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and let Suzanne and Lisa go to the, bring up the gift. And please sing Loving and Forgiving, number 214, 214.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for the for praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy, holy church. church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Sharon may be taken up into glory with your son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to do in our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection of dawn, that those saddened by the certainty of dying may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominion, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore for this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Dave, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Sharon, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she was united with your son in a death like his, 
may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostle, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her Peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Don't only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For communion, we will come through the center aisle and go through the sides. For those who are not Catholics or Catholics who are not in a state of grace, yes, we do invite you to come forward, but cross yourself, and I know, and I'll give you a special blessing. Thank you.
Presley sing, We Belong to You, <clears throat> number 634, 634.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that your seven Sharon, for whom we've celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As a final act of our liturgy, we are going to do the rite of commendation. In this rite that we're going to pray and give back, we give back Sharon to God. It's in our tradition, we'll use incense. Incense in the book of Revelation is told to rise up to God as a pleasing sacrifice. So our prayer, collectively, in whatever pain and joy we remember, let's join in that offering, Sharon back to the one who gave her to us. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Sharon, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in passing, but we take comfort that one day we shall see Sharon again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will be spaced in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us again into the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Please sing, Be Not Afraid, number 661, 661. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Sharon, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sin she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to our place of rest. Our prayer will continue at Spring Hill Memory Gardens. Please sing Amazing Grace, number 659, 659.
Oh, so 